Thank you very much for taking the time. So, hello everyone, and welcome to this second of our Mobilizing Evidence and Organizing Knowledge webinar. And the one today is on connecting people to corporate knowledge, uh, and the tool we're looking at is knowledge harvesting. Uh, so my name is Carol Giles, and I'm the library manager here at Exeter Health Library, and I'm going to be hosting today. And our training will be led by Alison Day, who's the lead librarian uh, for East Dorset, and she's based at Poole. So before I hand over to Alison, we will do a short poll to gauge your current knowledge of knowledge harvesting. The so first question is, um, have you ever been informed, or sorry, have you ever been involved in any form of knowledge harvesting? So if you want to use the tick or the cross or the chat facility. And also if you can deselect your hands as well, that would be great. Okay, so the majority of people there are saying that no, they haven't been involved uh, in any um, knowledge harvesting work. Okay, so our second question is, have you ever created a handover file before moving to another job or role? So if you want to be, the answer to that is a reversal. So most of you have created a, a handover uh, uh, file or log before, ha before moving on. Um, so that the next person within that role will have a, a basis of knowledge to start off with. Okay, so Alison, I'm going to hand over to Alison now, and she's going to tell us all about knowledge harvesting. And as I said, if you want to ask any questions during it, uh, during the presentation, just keep I'll uh, use the chat facility, um, and I'll keep an eye on that. But I'm now going to hand over to Alison for. Lots more stuff about knowledge harvesting. That's great. Thanks, Carol. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. And if you have any problems with hearing me at any time, please let um, Carol know at host two via the chat, and then I can try and take some measures to make myself clearer. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the poll. Um, interestingly, anybody who answered um, yes, they've done a handover file, I'd like to just say congratulations, you've done some knowledge harvesting, so, um, so well done. Your, your head's up already, and there are a couple of us who've done some other knowledge harvesting as well. So um, hopefully that will become apparent as I go through um, the slides. So um, what we really want to do in this second in our series of webinars around um, mobilizing evidence and organizational knowledge is really to explore knowledge harvesting. We're going to have a little consideration of what it is, why and when it can be used, consider how you would undertake a knowledge harvest interview, and consider some alternative tools that you can use. And we'll have, as Carol mentioned, two discussion elements looking at how, as library and knowledge service professionals, we can facilitate knowledge harvesting in our organizations. So really timely to be doing knowledge harvesting, as I'm looking out of my window and the leaves falling and the pears falling off my pear tree. Um, but I suppose a, a definition was always a nice place to begin. Um, and a formal definition of knowledge harvesting is that it's a, a structured approach to help an organization understand and record the knowledge and experience of people, often before they leave or move roles. Um, often takes form of an interview, a facilitated interview, um, and then the facilitator then organizes and packages the resulting knowledge into what we would call a knowledge asset, more about that in a future webinar, which would be published for the use of others taking over the role. So hopefully that makes a, a, a little bit clearer about what we're trying to do with knowledge harvesting. But I always think it's quite helpful to think why we might be doing it. Um, so really the, the reason for doing a knowledge harvest is to avoid the risk of losing knowledge um, from a team and to make sure that we capture the unrecorded, internalized, or what's often described in knowledge management terms as tacit knowledge of an individual that might otherwise be lost when the person moves on. 
The added advantage of a knowledge harvest is that you can actually um, share learning and reduce that learning time when a new person starts. So any of us who've created a handover file or indeed used a handover file when we started a new role, it can sometimes give us a bit of a head start when we get involved in that new role. Um, when is it appropriate to use knowledge harvesting? Times of change. We're all in a, a huge amount of change all the time if we're working within the NHS. Um, or indeed within the health, wider health sector. Um, so there's lots of people starting projects, moving on to new projects, moving into new roles, starting with new organizations. It's always appropriate at that time to maybe do a knowledge harvest to gather that tacit knowledge. Um, and it, can, it often takes the form of a structured facilitated interview, as I said earlier, where you would identify priority areas, collate and repackage um, the final results. So there are a couple of key steps um, to, to doing a knowledge harvest. Um, the first step is, is probably the most important one, is to, to really think about what is the risk of losing the knowledge when somebody leaves their role. So we're in a position in my trust at the moment where the medical director is retiring um, after many, many years of being in our organization, and, and that's happening at the end of this year. So there's a, there's a risk there that there'll be things that only he knows. Um, you know, we hope it's all documented but there's a risk that we may lose some of, some of his, his knowledge. Um, the second step is really then about assessing how relevant the knowledge of the lever is to the future of the team or organization. Um, you know, one could argue the knowledge of the medical director leaving is, is going to be really quite crucial to the, the business of, of our trust whereas perhaps um, somebody else who's leaving who has a, a very similar role to other people within the organization, maybe a staff nurse, it may not be quite so critical. Um, it would depend on their role and what they do, of course. It may be very critical within their team. The next step is then to plan and conduct an interview or offer an alternative tool to gather that knowledge and then to take the outputs from that knowledge harvesting and to transcribe it and edit it and hand it back to the interviewee so they can edit it and make sure it's giving the right message and then finally packaging that up so it can be shared. There's no point doing this if it's not in a, a format can, that can then be shared. So enough from me. Um, I think it would be really interesting to hear from, from you what's skills you think you would need to conduct some knowledge harvesting activity in your organization. So I've told you a little bit about what knowledge harvesting is and how you, the steps you take to do it. So I just think about the skills that you think you would need to conduct some knowledge harvesting activity. And to record your responses, I think we're going to, because we've got a couple of people using mobile devices, we're going to use the chat function. So if you uh, change the um, message at the top to all attendees, um, I think you should then be able to type your responses into the chat box at the bottom of the screen. So just one word answers are fine. Any skills you think you would need to conduct some knowledge harvesting activity? Okay, so we've got guidance or toolkit, the types of questions to ask, um, interviewing, questioning, listening skills. I think that's a really, really useful um, contribution. Um, and the comment, it's not always easy to sit and listen to people without wanting to interrupt. Understanding the job role you are capturing. I think that's quite interesting. I think you do probably need to have a little bit of an understanding. Yeah. Being able to pull out the essentials, could note taking. Yes, anyone see my handwriting on there? I'm not good at note taking. Um, summarizing. Transcribing is also a key skill, and it does take a lot of time, absolutely. How to capture and store. So I think we've got some really good responses there. Do keep those coming if you, if you want to. Um, interview skills, open-ended questions, I think that's all really useful as well. Um, I think actually we also need to think about where we get our information about our levers or our projects. So we might want to think about some links with our HR department. We might want to think about tying in with any project management that's going on within our organization so we can find out about what's happening. Um, and I think also that you've captured really all the other skills that are probably quite essential for this activity. 
And hopefully you're feeling that as library and knowledge services professionals, we, we've actually got quite a lot of those skills already. Summarizing comes to mind, good questioning, good listening, are things that we, we kind of do in our day-to-day -day jobs all the time. So there are a couple of tips for um, conducting a knowledge harvesting interview. And um, somebody mentioned timescales and being really clear on timescales and starting early enough in the process when you know somebody's about to move on is, is absolutely crucial. Um, and it's suggested in some of the literature that you allow at least four hours for the interview process itself, which seems an incredibly long time. Um, but I'm guessing it depends on who you're interviewing and what you're trying to capture. Um, they also suggest using a prioritization matrix to help you and the lever decide what is critical information. You, you, you don't want to be capturing everything. That's not going to be helpful to somebody moving into the role. It's really identifying those nuggets that only that person knows and are absolutely business critical. That, that's the key. Um, it's important to be clear on the expectations for the lever about the time and the outcomes of what expected. Interviewing standard sort of interviewing techniques of using the five whys, um, what, where, why, when, and who. And then when you're collating, thinking about grouping your responses into themes or to keep the analogy of the harvest going, actually thinking about the branches of the tree. Um, and then you've got the, the little nuggets of the sort of fruit, the individual pieces of knowledge that that individual knows are, are the fruit of the, the tree. And then it's sometimes useful to use some future tense questions to help sort of consider how the knowledge will be used by somebody else. So these might be things like, what would be your advice for someone doing this in the future? Or if you were doing this again, what would you do next time? Or if you could go back in time and give yourself a message, what would you tell yourself? So that's a little bit about the knowledge harvesting interview. So within the knowledge management, um, the NHS knowledge management framework, knowledge harvesting is regarded as a learning after um, activity. Um, they tend to, on the framework, split knowledge management activities into learning before, learning during, and learning after. And knowledge harvesting fits into the learning after. But having said that, it doesn't necessarily have to be a learning after event. It could take place at any time where you feel you need to capture that, that tacit implicit knowledge that somebody has. And within Knowledge for Healthcare and on the, um, the Knowledge Management Toolkit, knowledge harvesting appears in two of the main sections. It appears in the section around connecting people to corporate knowledge um, because it's about developing that organizational memory. Um, and enabling shared access to, to tacit knowledge. But it's also very much about sharing learning, making implicit knowledge explicit, spreading learning, supporting innovation, those kind of things. And you've got the link there to take a look at the Knowledge Management Toolkit. Um, and I, I would strongly recommend that you, you familiarize yourself with the tools within there. And there are case studies as well illustrating how these tools can be used. So we've talked about interviews, but it's not the only option for knowledge management. Um, there are other tools that can be used. And um, Rachel Cook at Surrey and Sussex Healthcare NHS Trust has developed a Leavers Toolkit, which is all about um, the retention and transfer of knowledge, which fits under the knowledge harvesting bracket, really, um, or heading. Um, and Rachel's got a lovely case study on how she's, she's used that at Surrey and Sussex, and, and that's on the um, Knowledge Management Toolkit, but I've also used this locally um, at Paul with a couple of high profile levers that we've had in our organization. It got sent out to our Director of Nursing who moved on last year. Um, I've already mentioned the Medical Director, it's been shared with him. Uh, it was shared with the Chair of our Trust who moved on uh, this year. And this quote I thought was rather lovely from a matron um, for elderly care services who's now retired. So before she retired, she used the toolkit it arrived a little bit late for her. She'd already started to use a lot of the tools because a lot of them were very um, sort of self-explanatory, but she thought it was useful to give her different approaches and different things to try. So what's in the toolkit, um, or the Leavers Toolkit? Um, it's really 15 tools or suggestions for how you can retain and transfer information. Um, one of the first ones is probably the most useful one, which is creating a table of the key priorities relating to your job. and um, this can be used by anybody at any stage within their, um, their role um, as a good way of identifying knowledge and making sure they're passing it on to their team. 
And it's a place where a lot of the other thing, the other tools or information and knowledge gathered from using the other tools can actually feed into the table of the key priorities. We mentioned right in our poll at the beginning, creating a handover folder. And I think a lot of us will have done that at some, some point or another. And it's a really simple way of gathering information together. But the real skill is making sure you don't include everything, because nobody, when they start a job, wants to really bomb be bombarded with that much information. My matron thought it was a really good idea to collate her emails and save them as documents. It wasn't something she'd considered. Um, and she thought that was really, really helpful um, to sort of do a, a real weed through her email and actually um, then categorize the ones that were worth saving. Other things are, are, are fairly obvious, things like annotated key contacts lists, um, calendars of key events and when they happen within a job, um, pruning and organizing electronic documents and files. These are all kind of really sort of information management type roles, really, where we're organizing and making sure that the management information is correct. And this toolkit it doesn't really suggest that library and knowledge services staff need to do this, although we may be able to offer assistance. Um, a work in hand position statement is always useful. Um, a list of resources, you know, key places to go, key people to speak to. And then you've got some other quite interesting ideas, like having a question and answer session with the team, an audience with, which can be a real celebration of what that person has achieved in their role, and the, and the team can ask questions. Um, and a knowledge exchange where each the team and the individual can each list the top 10 things that they want to ask questions about. Um, and it kind of ensures that continuity of the business. There's then the classic idea of a master class, so perhaps with a PowerPoint, sort of um, providing that in-depth training, perhaps if it's something technical around using something technical within a role. And then the standard sort of coaching or one-to-one -one baton passing, which is probably what a lot of people do if they're in the luxury of knowing who their successor is going to be. So I think, um, hopefully, I think the chat worked quite well. We could try a whiteboard, but I think at this point we might carry on with the chat facility and just do our second discussion activity, which is really to think about how we as librarians and knowledge specialists can facilitate knowledge harvesting in the health service. So give yourself, I'll give you a couple of minutes, well, about five minutes, just to think. Again, it can be just one word answers. It can be things about how we can facilitate any of that knowledge harvesting activity. So I've kicked us off by just suggesting that we can contact people we know are leaving and offer them the Leavers Toolkit. That can be quite a simple thing that we can do. And somebody else has suggested that we already have many contacts through our roles, um, and we should use those to identify who might be leaving. Really useful idea. Tweet a toolkit. Lovely idea. Yep. And linking in with HR and offering the toolkit. Providing storage for knowledge assets, making them accessible. Targeting senior leaders, I think that's a really sensible approach. And what we'll do is we'll gather all of these responses up, and I'll create a couple of extra slides so we can share responses that people have given after the, um, after the webinar. So a couple of other things that um, I thought we, we could probably reasonably do around knowledge harvesting is um, maybe offering to facilitate an audience with session. So actually be a, a sort of independent moderator, really, to sort of help that process along. And I'm always keen to kind of test things out on what I call my friendly users. As somebody said to me the other day, the tame users that they've got. Um, so actually practicing the techniques on people you feel comfortable working with is sometimes a good idea. So just remember when you're sending your um, responses to the chat to use the all attendees or all participants option when you click on send to, and then hopefully everybody should be able to see the responses, unless you're on a mobile device, which I understand there may be some difficulties with. The other thing I wondered, you know, the way of just getting familiar with some of these tools is actually just using them within our own library service, and certainly from the um, from the main uh, training event that we had around MEOC and some of the discussions we had in a knowledge cafe about using knowledge harvesting, um, 
that was something that many people came up with as an idea that well, we could actually use this within our own service first and use some of these tools just to get familiar with them and, and to make sure that we're gathering the knowledge. Okay, interesting, Barbara's um, put up that, um, I can't remember what your previous um, message was, Barbara, but something around a list of literature searches in the last month or three months possibly, so maybe looking to see um, you know, what, what project areas there are that we could pick up on and, and see if then we can go back and perhaps offer a knowledge harvesting um, activity or, or offer to facilitate a knowledge um, harvesting activity for someone. Thank you for all your responses. Like I say, we will gather those together. So I'm going to do a really, um, really sort of quick recap because I don't feel there's, there's masses more to say around knowledge harvesting. Um, but what I would like to just say that what we've considered is hopefully we've considered what's meant by knowledge harvesting. We've considered the steps involved in conducting a knowledge harvest interview. We've explored the Leaders Toolkit and the tools for knowledge retention and transfer. And we've discussed the skills that we may need for, to facilitate knowledge harvesting. And we've discussed how we can facilitate knowledge harvesting in our organizations. I think some lovely ideas that have come through from that. As I mentioned before, I would really recommend having a look at the Knowledge Management Toolkit, having a look at the postcard um, that supports the Knowledge Management Framework, which sets out more information about how to conduct a knowledge harvest including the time you should allow, um, and including um, tips on how to actually conduct a knowledge harvest. And there's actually, if you want to go into more depth about how to actually produce a, a, a knowledge harvesting interview, there is a piece of e-learning that's available. And I've put all those links at the end of the presentation. Um, I'm never one to let people go away and not think about what they've just heard. So I've set a piece of homework for you all. Um, which I hope you'll, you'll quite enjoy and, and hopefully find useful. But I think it'd be quite interesting for us all to have a look at the prioritization table, and I'll, I'll show you that in a moment, although there's an embedded link as well in the slides when you receive them, um, for you to create your own knowledge prioritization plan of the knowledge you have that you would want to pass on to your team or organization should you leave. I'm not suggesting that any of you are going to be leaving or moving on to new roles, but actually it's quite an interesting process just to take a, a pause in your day and just to think about what are you holding in your head or, or what have you not shared with the rest of your team? So, um, you know, from a business continuity point of view, what would they need to know to be able to carry on and for your, your crucial, important work to be able to continue? So just to show you what that looks like, it's a very straightforward um, Word document with some prompt questions to help you think about um, any knowledge that might be at risk of being lost. And then there's some suggestions about how you can then save this information and then indeed share it with the rest of the team. And when I looked at this yesterday, I, I found it quite interesting. I think, gosh, there's a lot that I haven't shared with my team and that I should really, um, this would be a useful exercise for me. Um, I'll just give you a moment to have a look at those questions. And then the second page, very simply, not too much detail, just identifying the risk area and what you're going to do to make sure that that risk is mitigated. So that's a, a little piece of homework um, just to think about, really, and it may be something you decide to take forward. These are the links I was mentioning, um, so useful additional information there about knowledge harvesting. But hopefully this webinar has shown you that like a lot of tools within um, knowledge management, it's not particularly complex. It's not a, it's not a million of miles away from what we, we do already in our day-to-day -day jobs. Sometimes the language can be a little bit tricky, but um, I think it's something that we can all get involved with uh, in one way or another. So I'm going to now go um, back to Carol just to see if there are any questions that have come up. And please do feel free to send in any questions, um, either to all attendees or to, the, um, in, or to the host, and I'll answer as best I can. Hi there. Yeah, we didn't have any other questions. Um, if anyone would like to send in anything now, then I'm already in waiting. Um, but really, we were just having the comments throughout your uh, presentation when we were doing the activities. 
So anything you wanted to add, Alison, before we say goodbye? No, I think probably um, I would just suggest, as I say, having a look at the links, have a go at using some of the tools with a, a friendly audience. I think it's a fairly straightforward, quick win for us around um, knowledge management, um, even if it's just sharing with people the Levers Toolkit, um, some great work that they should produce there. And if anybody wants to, to contact me offline around using some of the tools, very happy to, to field comments and questions that way as well. So if there are no questions, I think the last thing I would like you to do, oh, hang on, we've got a couple of things coming through, I've just noticed. Um, oh, I've got a nice comment here about I've helped debrief a member of another library team. Has anyone done work with other non-library teams? So I think that's an interesting approach. If you don't want to do it with your own team, you could do it with another partner library team to get confidence and then move on to non-library teams. So I think that's an interesting approach. So just one last thing, I'd, I'd quite, um, if you've got access to the buttons, the uh, hand tick cross, you'll see there's a little emoticon um, button. And I'd appreciate it if you could just take a few minutes just to have a look at the emoticons. And perhaps if you hover over them, you get a little notification of what each one means. And if you would like to select the one that best describes how you're feeling at this moment, having heard the webinar about knowledge harvesting, I'd appreciate that feedback. One question is, will the webinar be available after the session? Yes, we are recording it, and it will be made available, as will the slides, so that you've got um, access to all the links as well. Thank you ever so much for listening. I um, hope you can join us for the next WebEx at um, 10 a.m. on Wednesday, the 4th of October, when we'll be looking at communities of practice.